and I will go live now. Welcome everyone coming in. We're just going live in Facebook right now. So we will start in a moment. Okay, it looks like we are live. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Let's see, we have people coming in. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Hey, Katie, <laughs> Natasha, and hey, Tina. It's good to see you back. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Renee Roberts and I'm a registered health and functional nutrition coach and founder of Nourish to Live Rx. And I work with men and women over 40 uh, and help them develop ha healthy habits to gain energy and sleep better. So just some logistics before I introduce Stacy here. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat and let me know where you're connecting from. And if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to use the chat box. You can use the Q&A box as well. If you want to jump on the call and ask your question um, live, you can raise your hand and we'll bring you on audio so you can ask your question as well. So now I would like to introduce our guest speaker for this evening, Stacy Wales. Welcome, Stacy. Stacy is a structure and success coach working with creative entrepreneurs and coaches, helping them find clarity in themselves, feeling empowered in their business and career and obtain success in a life they love. She's passionate about working with you to uncover your vision, get unstuck and take empowered action towards your dreams. She lives in Houston, Texas and is a certified health and life coach, a wellness advocate, a dancer, and loves to be with family and friends, including her dog, Pepper. So welcome, Stacy. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. I, I just want to say I'm very honored to be here and that you asked me to be a guest speaker. This is an amazing, this amazing opportunity. And so thank you, Renee, for that. And I just want to welcome everybody. I just am so excited that you are here to talk about emotions. This is such a huge topic for me and I'm very passionate about it. And today that's what we're gonna talk about, how to balance your emotions and live empowered. So are you ready to feel good more often? I use the chat a lot. So if you would love to put the comments in the chat or if you have questions, just put them in there. That would be amazing. And we'll, we'll answer any questions that you have. Okay, more about me. I am a system structure and success coach. I'm a wellness advocate. I'm an I'm an aunt. There's Pepper, my dog there. Um, and I love food. Like food is my uh, thing. And then this is a, a picture of um, family here. So that's a little bit about me. But why is this topic so important to me? I just I have to share it. So I left a corporate career of over 18 years. And when I had this career of mine, I did not realize how the emotions impacted me and what it actually did to my health. And once I realized what, that I could master my emotions and that that really helped me really be empowered in my health and ultimately it changed my life. So this topic is so important to me. Okay. Now, before we get started, before we get rolling, I just want everybody just to take a deep breath in, really just fill our lungs and exhale as we get ready to think about emotions. This is really going to just help us set the tone today um, and just help us get focused. Okay, so I told you that I love food and I do love marshmallows. And this is such a great picture of what different emotions we can have throughout the day. So the thing about it is that no matter our age, our lifestyle, where we live, all humans 
have one thing in common. We all have emotions every day. Now, it's something that as being a human that can impact our well-being and our happiness. Do you believe that? Do you feel like your emotions have an impact on you throughout the day? Then yes or no in the chat, that would be great. Now, emotions are some can be quite complicated because emotions can be triggered by a lot of stimuli. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that later in the presentation. But emotions are things that we do in response to our environment. That's the people around us, the places that we are. It could just be anything around the physical location. We're talking quiz. I know you didn't think you're gonna have a quiz, but we're talking about a quiz. So I'd love to hear this. Put A or B in the chat, or you know, do you think you can control your I'd love to hear? You think A? Yes, I totally got this under control, or B, there's no such thing as control with your emotions. I love it. Thanks, Tina, Katie. Hey, yes. What I would say is that control is one of those words that is, I would say, yes, can we master our emotions? Can we manage our emotions? Yes. But sometimes when we try to control our emotions or situations or things, things like that, we, it is sometimes when I feel like I'm in control and I'm trying to control things, that's really when things get out of control for me. But I know that I have awareness now that I can manage these emotions and then make better decisions. Okay. We are made up as a whole, right? We are made up of our mind, body, and spirit, and that makes up our total wellness. And in all of these three parts, this is what we have to nourish. We have to nourish our mind, our spirit, and our body. And we are made up of cells that are designed to restore our body. That's you know, the intent of all our cells. And emotions are actually just information-carrying molecules that bind with the cells, we have a lot of science here, with the receptors, but that's actually how certain things that we have unique experiences is really the emotions that are that information carrying molecule that that bound, binds us to the cells. But because we're all unique and we all have different personal experiences, each will experience emotions in a different way. Okay. So today's agenda, we're going to discuss how emotions affect our quality of life. And we're also going to learn simple strategies to balance and live in power. Are you excited? I'm excited to talk about this. And by the time that we leave today, we're gonna to identify emotions and how it relates to your body and beliefs. We're gonna learn about what the typical response and the empowered response. We're gonna learn about building blocks that can strengthen your emotional health, empower you to release those negative patterns and emotions. And we're gonna learn how to identify trigger so that you know when you need that emotional support. This is gonna be jam packed full of stuff. If you have questions, just put them in the chat and I definitely, we will answer those for you. Okay. I like my little meme here, uh, but let's just say you're having a life experience. How many of us have life experiences like this, this girl right here? Mine used to be driving in Houston traffic to work every day, which usually would take maybe 20 to 30 minutes. But if you've ever been to Houston, six lanes of traffic going one way in rush hour could sometimes take two hours. And every day when I would have that life experience, I would be a wreck. I would be a total mess. And then I would be processing, right? I'd be like, oh, okay, now I'm gonna be late to work. Oh my gosh, I feel overwhelmed. I'm already late, I have this meeting. What am I gonna do? What happens, my boss, what is she gonna say? And I'm just gonna be late. So we're processing in our, in our minds, in our brains, in our hearts, and in our gut. And then we have some trigger reaction, right? So you get that headache. Maybe you start to sweat. You have some conflicting feelings like, oh, well, 
I guess I'm just gonna have to be late. It's gonna work itself out. And then sometimes we would just feel nauseated in our stomach, okay? All of those things equal beliefs, right? And sometimes those beliefs end up somewhere where we keep going down the spiral of, oh gosh, I'm just not good enough. I should have woken up early enough. Oh, I'm constantly late. And sometimes we just need to weed out some of that belief, right? Because it really is what we actually are doing or saying or whatever actually doesn't equal, right? Who we are. It's not like who we're made of. It's just something that happens to us. And it's when we start to feel and we get all this input that that's when we have something where we're like, oh, you know, our beliefs come from. Does that all make sense? So does this resonate with anybody? I'd love to hear in the chat. So how many of you feel like you have these situations going on? Or maybe you want to learn more about how you're going to figure out how to not know, have those emotions. Okay. So we have three brains. If you saw in the previous slide, we have three brains. We have our mind, we have our heart, and we have our gut. And in our mind, our mind is the logic and intellect part of our emotions and our body. And that is the subconscious. So most of what we do is subconsciously, right? Which is the subconscious mind is about 90%, directs 90% of our behavior, okay? And our brain with these factors really determine how we respond emotionally it's like how we do our action, right? And it's really based on previous experiences and sometimes our survival instincts. With our heart, our heart is really about intuition, okay? And there are actually more neural pathways that go from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart. And so that represents the intuition part of our emotions and our body. And the last part of the three is the gut. Have you ever heard about gut feeling? You know, you get that uneasy, like, you know, some people say, well, how does your gut feel? Go with your gut. Well, 90% of the body's serotonin and other feel-good chemicals are created in the gut. And we're going to learn why it's important to have healthy emotions, right? Because emotions and like for that stress, et cetera, those types of things impact our gut, right? And if most of how we feel good, most of our body serotonin and other food feel good chemicals are created in the gut and we're not supporting that, then sometimes, you know, that can help, you know, chemically, we won't have the emotions that we want, you know, stress, et cetera. But each one of us, depending on the situation, if we go back to earlier, is going to have a different outcome. You know, sometimes what you may find when you're in traffic may not be the same experience that I have or may have the same emotions. Um, and I know this is very simplistic, but emotions are in two categories. They're positive and negative. Emotions can improve our well-being, whereas the negative ones, they are also sometimes detrimental to our health. Okay, but once you align your three brains, that's where you get connection equals wellness. It's when those three things are aligned, which is the empowered response. Per Dr. Candace Pert, she's a PD, she's a PhD, um, author of The Molecules of Emotion. She said that feelings are only chemicals that can help or hurt. Like I said, negative emotions that we feel throughout the day can typically be considered positive, right? Or negative. And if you think about positive, those are the uplifting right? Help us with the mood and really helps us, motivates us. Whereas the negative ones, they demotivate us, right? They don't make us feel good. We can spiral down. Um, and then those negative emotions then can impact our health, which is what happened to me. Um, previously, um, I just had really crazy career and I was very busy. And because I wasn't able to um, manage my emotions very well, that took a very detrimental 
part of my health and I would I did not feel good and I ended up getting sick. Okay, but I have a three step strategy for you to balance your emotions and live empowered and I can't wait to share these with you. So the first one is strengthen. We're going to strengthen your health and wellness. We're going to learn how to release, right, those negative patterns and emotions. And then we're going to learn how to be empowered and really understand those emotional responses. This is amazing. I can't wait to share it with you. Okay, so the first one, my first secret, it's the building blocks of health. I know most of you know all about the building blocks of health, but I want to go over and share them again. This is not, I would say it's a secret. It's really not a secret, but it's something that we need to be reminded of. The building blocks of health are live, you need to have whole foods, right? Protein, fat, and fiber. And if we think about a healthy plate, it's usually a third, a third, a third, right? So with some fat and you, you know, you definitely want to have fiber. So you want to live from whole, real whole foods. If also supplementation. So sometimes we need to take that extra supplementation that really helps us do the building blocks of health, water. Yes, I said water. We need to be drinking enough water. Usually that is about half of your, you know, you usually take your body weight divided by half, and that's the number of ounces that you need to be drinking a day. Now, if you're in Texas right now, it's really super hot, you need to be drinking more. Um, or if you're working out, you need to be drinking more. If you're drinking, if you have a lot of caffeine in your, that you're having, you also have to just drink more. You need to get movement in. So I say movement and not exercise, okay? Because I, who loves exercising? Now, somebody may really love exercising, but I am not consistent at it and I really don't like exercising, but I do love to move. Like I'm a dancer, I like dance in my kitchen. I just love moving. And so that is walking Pepper. She's She reminds me every day that I need to take a walk, right? So she we're on a walk four times a day. Um, sleep is really important and then self-care and we're going to learn about self-care techniques as well later in the presentation but these are the building blocks of health okay so how do we strengthen sometimes we just need to ask ourselves some questions to understand whether or not uh we may be you know, you know, sometimes we have to be curious about things, right? So when we're having an emotion, right? Maybe it's a headache. Maybe it's, um, I'm hungry, right? Sometimes it is just asking myself, am I hungry? Because sometimes when we're hungry, we actually may be just thirsty. We may be just be dehydrated, right? Um, when we're stressed out, and trust me, this was me, when I was stressed out, every day at work, I would have, you know, a, a can of Coke <laughs> and a three musketeers. That was my stress food. And I would have that practically every day. Now I can't have Coke anymore. Um, it just actually doesn't make me feel good. But sometimes I would I was like curious enough to say, why do I want that? And it really wasn't because I was hungry or needed it. It was just because I was tired. I felt like I needed a boost when really maybe I should have just took a walk outside. Um, sometimes we may have consumed something or ate something that gave us that trigger, right? So if you think about sugar, and I ate that, that candy bar every day, um, that just actually spiked my sugar up, right? And then I wanted to crave more, you know, that I actually wanted to have more sugar. And that ne not necessarily was what I needed to be doing. I needed to be drinking some more water. Sometimes we can, we need to ask ourselves when we get to this point, how can I nourish and strengthen myself right now? What is it? And we're talking about one simple step that you can do. And sometimes that's just getting in your chair for some of us who are working at home, or maybe you're at work and it's just stretching. Okay. You're just taking a stretch. Sometimes it's just breathing, right? Just taking a few deep breaths in and out um, so that you can get oxygen into your body. And then the last thing I say here is that it's about sometimes we just don't know, but journaling and free writing, sometimes your inner self will tell you what they need. So sometimes just closing your eyes, 
having that deep breath, it'll actually come to you. Even walking around, you know, it'll come to you. And even if you write it down, sometimes you're gonna be able to get what you need. That's the strengthen part. The next one is, the secret too, is release the negative patterns. And we're gonna talk about physical versus emotional digestion because there is a connection. Okay, so physical versus emotional, negative patterns plus the emotions, specifically around digestion. Remember when I talked earlier before about, you know, the three brains and the gut? Well, and how important, you know, our serotonin and good feeling, you know, chemicals are made from there. Well, digestion is so important, right? So healthy digestion is where we're actually breaking down the food. So can anybody tell me where digestion begins? I know, another pop quiz. Where does digestion begin? If you think about it. While you're putting that in, I'm going to continue. Nutrients are used to support health and you are releasing waste or toxins is relief. That's just the normal healthy digestion. Now, if you can compare that to healthy emotional digestion, that is where we break down and understand our life experiences. We learn from our lessons and we have a sense of well-being, and we release pain and are a bit of having an ability to move forward. Now that's healthy emotional digestion. But when we're being unhealthy, for example, physical digestion, it's when our digestive system works. It's trying to work, but it can't break down all the food, right? It's where it's trying to process all the nutrients as much as possible, but it can't use all of them. And that's when we have toxins in our bodies that are actually, that we try to release, but we can't. And that usually those toxins are typically stored in our body as fat. So when we do have the unhealthy physical digestion, sometimes this is really related to stress. And we have four types of stress, right? We have biological, we have chemical, we have physical, we have, um, um, mechanical, I think. And so our body is having some type of stress in our body, but when stress really increases, that is when we have really unhealthy digestion. It's also where we un have unhealthy emotional digestion, right? It's like we cannot break down or understand our experiences. We get really stressed out. We get stuck. You know, we, you know, sometimes that leads us to doing other things like binge eating. Our experiences are usually drowned out by negativity. How many of you feel like when you get to that point, everything is like so negative, you cannot get out. It's like, there's no positivity left. And then we do have pain that is stored in our body. Now, I know that's kind of a little bit woo, but sometimes we can be holding on to negative patterns in our body that will emotionally um, affect us, not just digestion, but just throughout the day. And it's because we're not able to healthy release those. I hope that makes sense. And yes, Tina, chewing is where digestion um, occurs. That's what the very first thing where we chew. And if we're not chewing properly our food, um, you'll notice that um, you're not actually getting all the nutrients that you need out of your food. Okay, so to release, you know, sometimes we need to, am I hydrated enough? I mean, sometimes we're just not drinking enough water. Um, we need to ask ourselves, what can I let go of right now? And that doesn't mean like forever right now, it just means, hey, what can I stop doing right now that helps me be able to get through whatever I need to do? Do I need to have the hundred items on my to-do list? <laughs> Trust me, my to-do list is about 200 items, but I really, I can't do all 200. So what's important to me right now? And can I reschedule some of those things? Can I delegate? Can I eliminate? Sometimes we need to ask ourselves, what digestive support can I give myself right now? And that may be getting some healthy foods in us, you know, eating healthy. That could just be chewing our food, relaxing when we eat. Um, and then another release technique, which you may or may not know about, which is emotional freedom technique, uh, um, i.e. tapping, where you can tap and do affirmations, which will help you release some of that emotional stress, um, but also help you get centered. So that's release. The last 
secret that I have is called feel empowered. And that's really about healthy emotional responses. Okay. When we talked about um, a little bit about this earlier is that our emotions are positive and negative, right? So if we think of the stress response, we think of that as fight or flight, which there's a purpose to that. But that's also where we get fear and anxiety and tension in our body. It also is where metabolism slows down. Actually, in the stress response, it actually slows down our metabolism. We store fat. And it's related to the, the, the sympathetic nervous system, which is where the stress response is. When we're in a healing response, that's relaxation or balance. We have a sense of trust and well-being. Our metabolism goes up. We actually burn more fat. And that's really around the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the healing response. So when you think about it, to have the healing response, one of the techniques that we can use just to maybe even trick our body into that is just to breathe. I know that sounds kind of a little crazy, but even if you take 10 breaths every day, that actually will slow down the response that you're having in your body and help get, propel you into that healing state. Okay, so empowered. Sometimes we just need to be curious and ask ourselves, am I stressed? Do I need sleep or do I need some fresh air? Have I, do I need, do I need something to help, help me, you know, get empowered? Can I, how can I best support my nervous system and help it calm down right now? And then a great technique here to help being empowered is really to meditate and to do deep breathing. A good deep breathing technique is what we call for some of us who are coaches, which is a five, five, seven breath which is for us is taking five, you know, breathing in for five seconds, holding that breath for five seconds, and then really blowing out the air all the way out, right? Expanding our diaphragm out and letting all of the air come out of us. And then doing that again, really breathing all the way in and then all the way out. That can actually just help you get back into that healing response and reduce all of that emotional stress, right? That you would be having and help get you a better perspective and can be done in like two to three minutes. It's so simple. Okay, this is the end. I'm just gonna wanna let you know that em emotional balance is possible, right? It is all about awareness if you have to continuously be supportive, right? You have to be aware, be proactive and intentional. You need to listen to your body, your emotions and respond in supportive ways, right? So when you feel like you're going down the negative Nelly thing, sometimes we just need to stop, ask and be curious so that we can strengthen, release and empower ourselves um, to help you be who you want to be, right? To get you out of that emotional set, uh, that emotional place that you want to be. So thank you so much for letting me present this. I know it was fast. It was about 40 minutes, but I really want to be able to open it up for questions now. Um, if you had any questions and uh, be able to help you out in any way with this presentation. Thank you, Stacey. That was really interesting for sure. <laughs> I find the negative um, emotions are the hardest. They always have been for me. Um, and I think it has to do with, um, you know, building stories in your head. I think that that comes with having anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you, you build these stories and then they, they play out in your head. And then that's the truth when in reality it isn't. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, it takes a lot to get through that for me, for sure. Does anyone have any questions that they want to type in the chat? Or you can raise your hand. Maybe come on and can raise your hand. Yeah, you can <laughs> do the Q&A. Okay, we have, uh, we have a question from Natasha. Uh, Natasha says, I have tried tapping and haven't felt anything different. Is there a way to do it right and wrong? Um, 
I don't know if you've ever, um, so I think, let me go back to tapping, whether it can be right or wrong. I don't think there's a right or wrong way of tapping. Um, if you follow Gabby Bernstein, she has, you can watch a video of her in tapping, um, which I find is amazing, right? Um, and she's, she has her tapping technique and I can't remember the other gentleman's name, but anyways, I don't think there's a right or wrong reason. What I would say about tapping is that sometimes that may not be the right technique for you. And be, and this is what I say to a lot of my clients is that you have to find the system, right? Or the structure that is really gonna work for you in your particular situation or particularly for you. So it's about figuring out what works for you and doing more of that. If tapping isn't working for you, then I wouldn't tap at all, right? And not to say that you wouldn't continue to try it, but I, I you know, sometimes that technique doesn't resonate. So I, I mean, yes, EFT is a good way for some people and I have used that with my clients, but you know, for me, it, tapping doesn't work exactly for me, right? Like if I were to do the, the tapping, that doesn't help me as much. Whereas the, a breathing technique and a meditation where I actually step away and I can just take two to three minutes, maybe even five minutes, it doesn't have to be really that long, that actually can help me do more than, you know, the tapping sequence. Does that make sense? I hopefully that makes sense, Natasha. Awesome. Yeah, I've tried tapping. Um, I found, yeah, like you, there were other techniques that worked a little bit better for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I always wonder that. But I'm also not one that, because I think when you do the tap, you're doing affirmations as well. Yeah, yeah, affirmations. yeah as you're doing the tapping. And for me, I've never been in big into affirmations. So I think that makes a difference as well. I just maybe haven't found the right affirmations to, to use. But um, yeah, for me, you know, the breathing always has worked for me. I, I like the breathing mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you know, yeah, she says, thanks. Maybe I'm one of those. Um, that as well, that isn't super suited for that technique. So, but there are one other thing um, that I, I tend to like a lot that I've just recently learned about is hypnotherapy. I love hypnotherapy. It seems to work well for me. Um, again, it's, it's sort of like a little bit, a bit of affirmations, but there, somebody's telling you what you should feel. <laughs> so I don't have to come up with my own, which is kind of nice. Um, Tina says, I find listening to spa music calms me when I'm stressed and do meditate daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I have trouble meditating. I'm not one to meditate, but the breathing works. And what I can do when I meditate is the candle meditation. It works for me when, you know, to turn off my brain is just look at a candle flame. It works wonders. So it, it kind of focuses me and it zones me out, I think. So... Yeah. Do we have any other questions? What do you, I have a question. What do you, um, what do you suggest for, um, for people who, who, um, I guess not for people, but if you are with people that are negative or people that tend to to draw energy out and take away your energy? What do you recommend? That's such a good question. Um, I think you have, I think sometimes when people are, so there's always a, po there's always a reason, like there's always a positive reason why they're negative. I know this doesn't make sense. But when they're negative, they're actually like trying, they're reaching out for, for help, right? There's always a positive reason for like the things that we do, even when it doesn't sort of make sense to us. Um, at work, when I would have a lot of negativity going on, sometimes it's about asking questions, right? And not that you, it's not about being sympathetic, right? To them, 
Um, but it's also being empathetic, right? Because we do all have a lot of things going on in our day. And I used before, you know, my coaching experience and ever all of this teaching that I went to, I would always do a judgment, right? And we're taught to judge all the time. Um, it's just something that happens to us and part of our critter brain and things like that, that we, that we grew up with. But one of the things about it is that I would always now be, I'd always ask myself, oh, I'm just really curious, right? Not to the person, but I'd just be curious what's happened that, you know, maybe has had this person be this negative. And then sometimes I would be um, supportive, right? To be like, well, what is it that I could help you with? Now, it doesn't mean that I help them with that. It was just more of being that sounding board. Um, but you do have to have an energy bubble up too. That's why having emotion, having being aware, right? And having emotions and understanding that trigger cycle, right? You know, somebody, people have that, they, they, they have, they're thinking, they're having a reaction. And then you have some response, right, to that. Um, and understanding that, that really will just help you. But sometimes you just have to remove yourself from the situation as well. Because at some point, some individuals just will not be able to get themselves out of it. No matter how much you would love to be able to help them, sometimes it's all about saying, you know, that's great. And then, you know, exiting, right? Sometimes. Um, and that can be really hard for us, especially if that's somebody that's very close to us, our loved ones, maybe. Um, or, you know, even friends or colleagues that we have to interact with every day. But, you know, it, it's something that just the more you're aware of it and the more that you understand it, you become aware of it, the more you can, like I said, be prepared to be able to have that response back, right? So you can say, yep, this is not a situation I even want to get into and then I can go on. Or maybe I understand this part and I, you know, I will move forward, right? But um, my friend Karis would always say to me, like, choose your choice, right? You are in control. And I say control, but you have a choice of what you want to be doing, right? You have a choice of what the reaction is sometimes of the emotion. Once you are aware of it, right? You can continue to do that or you can decide to change, right? There's no wrong way of looking at it. And remember, everybody processes emotions differently. And so, you know, our lens of how we see things may not be the same as others, right? So we, we just have to be cognizant of that and to be aware. Awesome. Christopher actually said, going for a run helps me. So that's, that's good as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I like how you said movement instead of exercise. I, I preach the same thing. It doesn't have to be exercise because I think sometimes exercise has a negative connotation, right? So movement is always, is always a good way to say it because it doesn't have to be like strenuous. So yeah, that's really good. Does anybody else have any questions? So there's one in the Q and A thing. Oh, there is. Yes, from Sandy. Do you think it's a matter that we need to explore within ourselves to find which challenges we have and the ways we need to tackle them? Um, I think this is through experience. Um, and, and the reason I say that is a lot of our things, okay, so I'll, let me, I'll go back to this kind of be interesting, but sometimes our brain will already process an answer, right? Our body already knows the answer before our brain can get to the answer. Hope that makes sense. So we're already, our body, because of other past experiences, right, is having an emotional reaction, but it's taking some time for the brain to be like, catch up, right? Do that. You're already having this emotional response. Um, and so I think the more, and I really think, is, is it really more of something that you need to explore? I would use the, a wor the word to be aware. Once you are aware, right, and we talked about the triggers, right? So is it something that I'm doing that triggers a response that is doing X, Y, Z? So I'll, I'll tell you about my, my, um, 
my Coke and my candy bar, right? It was always at the same time. Once I started to be aware of that, it was about 2.30 p.m., right? It was after I had just these, and it would always happen after a really crazy meeting. It was like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta have this, I had to have the sugar, right? And it was my way of releasing stress was that key, was the sugar, right? My way of releasing stress was having this candy bar and this coke. Did it make relieve my stress? No, it gave me a little bit of a sugar high and then I would just crash back down, right? Um, but once I was aware of that, I was able to make a change, right? So it's about being aware of the things you're doing and just stopping and saying, I'm curious about why I'm having this reaction. Good or bad, right? I'm, I'm why am I, you know, being elated or maybe, and sometimes it's more important when it's negative, obviously, but understanding, oh gosh, why am I having this emotion? Like for people, right? Sometimes I would have a negative emotion with a certain person at work. And I finally had to ask myself, why am I having this reaction? Like every, she, would not, she would do whatever and I would still have always the same reaction. And it dawned on me that there was something that would trigger me to be like, like with that, I would have that emotion. And as soon as I was aware of that, I could totally change it. I had a way of change, you know, choosing, right? Choose my choice. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes sense, Sandy. Awesome. Let's see. Yes, very clear. Thank you. That's what she said. Okay. There's a couple other questions. Uh, Ram Rambo said, I like the candle meditation idea. I will try that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina said, living in the now is a great reminder for me instead of living in past or future. Yeah, for sure. And then Deb has a question. I'm in a caretaker situation and I find that my stress, stress compounds. So for example, I'm stressed at the doctor, but can control my response. So then I'm stressed at the drugstore, but then, and I can control my response. Then I'm stressed by something else and I lose perspective. Any suggestions on how to avoid compounding stress? Mm. And I totally relate to this one. Where yeah, you I know, I totally. <laughs> it's like you get up to here and then there's a breaking point and it's like, you know, so one of the things here is that, you know, you have like, so I'll just uh, have an example. Yeah. So you'll have, and I'll just say chaos, right? You'll have a situation and then you, you, you're fixing it, right? And then you have a situation and then you try to fix it. And then you have a situation and you try to fix it. Well, what ends up happening is that you don't totally 100% fix each situation, um, you're able to deal with it, right? And you said control. And so I love that word, control. You're able to like fix it, right? But you didn't actually work through it, right? So you weren't able, like when we talked about the release part, the strengthen, release, and empower, you actually didn't release it. Right. And so what's happening is that it's just adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up. And I could totally understand this because I've had this particular situation um, with family. So and what ends up happening is, is that at some point you have to have some decompression, like real decompression. And I know it sounds like, OK, you're you're asking Deb, you're probably asking me, like, I don't have time. <laughs> this and I'm sure Renee could say this I said the same thing like I have all this stuff going on I'm trying to take care of the situation I just don't have time to be able to even take time for me right does that resonate for anybody like you are giving 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 and it's like I can't get that time but what I would say to you is that this is where um we and especially Sometimes we have to have a perspective of saying, I have to take some time and that time doesn't have to be hours. Okay. And I know you're thinking that, but just like, can I take 10, 15 minutes where I can digest, right? That emotional digestion that I can emotionally digest it, think about it. Maybe you need to journal about it so that you can relieve, actually release actually release it so that you can get the perspective back. 
Okay. And so that's what I would say is like, you have to carve out, and I know you're saying, gosh, I can't do it, but you can carve out five, 10 minutes. And that could be in the morning, right? As part of your morning routine. And that can take five, five 10 minutes, right? Where you, you have your glass of water in the morning. Okay. You, you, you do a breathing exercise for two minutes, right? You say some gratitudes that start that process. You get some stretching in, right? All of that can happen in about five, five, seven minutes, right? And that will really just, if you continue to do that, that's going to be a practice for you that will help with that stress. You can do it in the morning or you can do it as decompression at night, right? So, you know, you can do the same thing in reverse, right? Get that drink of water, right? Because we get dehydrated in the, at, at night, we're, we're dehydrating our body. So get that glass of water, journal, right? Write all the things that you need that are like in your head, put those on a piece of paper. Because if we don't do that, our brain is trying to fix it while we're trying to sleep, right? But if you write it down, it says to you, oh, it's already taken care of. I don't need to think about it when I'm working you know, when I'm sleeping. And then you can have your gratitudes at night, forget that, that sense of like, you know, sleeping, get your sleep schedule, right. And then do it at night. You can do it both in the morning and, night. and it doesn't have to take hours, right? Five minutes, five minutes, five to 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. Does that help Deb? I like the yeah. nighttime. Yes. I like the nighttime decompression. Yeah, awesome. it, it's wonderful. Like at nighttime, get some essential oils that will help you sleep, you know, some lavender, Roman chamomile or something like that. Have some tea, you know, at night, just create a ritual for yourself, you know, get that candle out and just have that, you know, that five, 10 minutes of, you know, sleep, you know, drinking your, your tea and just having a, taking a breath, right? That is just going to help you. It's just going to help you with your day. It's going to close out the day so you can have that renewal in the morning. Awesome. Well, that was good. That was good. Thanks for that question, Deb. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. From Rambo, a number of years ago, I was in a very dark place, journaled about it, found it last year during COVID cleanup, and burned it all. Very cathartic. Not sure if that was a good or bad idea, but now I've let go of it all. I think that if it works for you, I would say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when we're having a fear or sometimes we need to um there's a technique where you write it down and you put it on a piece of paper right so it's kind of an empowerment exercise but you write it down and all these things and then you do you just well burning is great right if you have outdoor thing just toss it in there right it's kind of like this great awakening or you can tear it up right and throw it away um, and that just is, again, it's part of that release, right? Once you have the release, then you're going to feel empowered, right? So you're going to strengthen, release, and feel empowered. That's kind of like the three things. I think, too, that you mentioned it earlier that you need to, what you, you need to understand what you can control and what you can't yeah, control. Can control. And you need to let go of everything you can't control. That's one thing. That's one lesson I've learned. If you can't control it, then there's no point in wasting any energy on it at all. Brain energy, anything, physical energy. So, um, Sandy says being in the here and now solves all problems, but we get distracted easily. Absolutely. <laughs> we do get distracted. Uh, and it, that's just how we are. We just have lots of things going on. And, and that's why just taking that again, that five, 10 minutes in the morning or night to get us, pull us back to what's really important to us, really able to help get us focused and, and back on track. Mm -hmm. For sure. This is great. These are great, great questions coming in. Does anybody have anything else? This has been really good. Um, if anything, come, feel free to type any questions. I am yeah, going to yeah. just, um, I am going to say a few things, uh, before we, before we end. Um, I did want to thank you, Stacy, for joining. This was great. This was, uh, really good information. Um, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, I have seen some repeats, so this is great. Um, and, you know, I will, for those of you that are new to these, uh, webinar series, I will send out a link to the replay tomorrow. 
so you can watch it um, if you uh, if you'd like. And uh, then I have a few other events. I do these every other week. I also do some of these weekly. Um, but I do have an event coming up Monday. So for those of you that have trouble sleeping, this may be interesting to you, is I have a five day sleep better challenge starting on Monday. So that should be a lot of fun. And uh, then I will, I'm just gonna post a few things in the chat so you guys know uh, where everything is. If you'd like to join some of the future webinars coming up or the sleep challenge, challenge starting on Monday. Um, and that's a free challenge. I don't know if I said that. So yeah, it should be fun. And uh, yeah, I don't know, Stacy, if you want to put anything in the chat, I know you will send out a thank you email as well with all your details. And if you have anything you want to share about um, any programs that you are running right now or what you do, feel free to post or talk, you know, mention it, say a little bit about it. So one of the things that I do is like, if you like, I do do a wellness consult. So I do a 30 minute wellness consult, if you will. Um, and that's open and we I'll put that link in the chat here. And then also coming up, um, I have a 28 day challenge. This is a paid challenge, um, but it's 28 day for like your whole wellness, right? We talk about foods, we talk about all those things, health, stress, those things. It's a 28 day well health, wellness challenge. It's not a cleanse, okay? So I, I have to reiterate, we're not cleansing in this. We're learning about what foods we should be eating for our bodies, which is so important because um, like I said, um, before you cleanse, you need to probably figure out what is working for you before you take everything away. Um, and so I do have that coming up and that will be probably launching sometime after um, the summer months. And um, that's really all I have going on. So if any of you felt like this resonated with you and you just want to have a chat, um, I will, I'm, I'm trying to pop in that, um, get here, that link for you to set up some time. Um, and that's awesome. really what I have going on. Cool. Um, well, again, you know, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great session. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed having this and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And I can't wait to see you guys again, maybe on Monday, if you want to join or in two weeks from now where I will be speaking about sleep. Um, so I won't have the guest speaker next time. It'll just be me presenting. So uh, yeah. Okay, Stacy put the link in. So grab it if you'd like. It will also be sent out an email tomorrow. So have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>